Hello, this is Abdir. The topic of our discussion in this video tutorial is the monotone convergence theorem. I will begin this video tutorial with few definitions. My first definition is what is increasing and decreasing sequence. A sequence is said to be an increasing sequence if the journal term of the sequence, let's suppose an is the journal term of the sequence, if it satisfies the following inequality. This inequality is the a n plus one term is bigger than or is equal to its previous term a n. And this is a true for, for all uh, n belong to the set of natural number. Or in any, or in other words, any two consecutive term of the sequence uh, satisfy this inequality. That is that the next term of the sequence is bigger than or equal to its previous uh, uh, term. And you can also see that if the sequence satisfies such a condition, that means the term of the sequence are keep getting larger and larger. Similarly, we can define what is a decreasing sequence. A sequence must, will be a decreasing or is a decreasing sequence if the a n plus one term of the sequence is less than is equal to a n. And this is also true for n belongs to set of natural number. Or in other words, if you pick any two consecutive term of the sequence, uh, the next term of the sequence is always less than or is equal to it is a previous term. And also you can conclude that if the sequence is decreasing, the term of the sequence are getting smaller and smaller. Now, what is a monotone sequence? A sequence set is said to be a monotone if it is either increasing, either increasing sequence or it is a decreasing sequence. So if it is one of them, we will call that sequence is a monotone sequence. Now I will show you a few examples of sequence which are increasing, decreasing, or the sequence which are not monotone. My first example is sequence a n is one over n. So as you can see, if I compute the few term of the sequence, a1 is equal to one, a2 is equal to one half, a3 is equal to one third, a4 is equal to one fourth, and so on. And computing these few term, I can make uh, basically a guess that a1 is going to be greater than or is equal to a2, and this is going to be greater than or is equal to a3. And this is a greater than or is equal to a4. And I can just make a guess that this trend will continue. Or in other words, a n term will be greater than or is equal to a n plus one in general. So I have a n plus one term is always less than or is equal to a n term for n belongs to set of natural number. So this implies this sequence is, as you can see, this sequence is a decreasing sequence. So therefore this is a decreasing, decreasing sequence. And sometimes we call a decreasing sequence monotone decreasing sequence. And since this is a decreasing sequence, this is also a, a monotone sequence. Also I showed you this inequality this inequality is true for all values of natural number. And uh, how I basically uh, find this inequality, just calculating the each term of the sequence. There is a, another more rigorous method to prove that why this inequality is true for uh, this particular sequence. And now I'm gonna show you the proof of that, that a n plus one is always less than is equal to a n for all n belong to the set of natural number for this particular sequence. So to prove this, I will start with basically this term, a n plus one minus a n, and I will compute this term. Now the first I have to find what is a n plus one. a n plus one is the journal term of the sequence, which is computed at n plus one. So the journal term of the sequence is this. So I'm gonna replace n by n plus one, and then I substitute what is a n, it is one over n. Now my next goal will be 
to simplify this expression by making the uh, denominator of these two terms uh, same. So if I do that, I will get on the top n minus n plus one and in the denominator, I will get n plus one time n, which is the common denominator. So if I simplify a little bit more, I'm gonna get negative one on the top and I will get n, n plus one in the denominator. Clearly this one is strictly less than or is equal to zero for all values of n belong to the set of natural number because the denominator of this term is a negative and the denominator of this term is always positive. So negative time positive is negative. So uh, this term is always be negative no matter what values of n you choose. So now um, basically this conclude what this shows uh, us that a n plus one minus a n is less than is equal to zero for all values of n because I picked this and that is equal to basically less than is equal to this. So therefore a n plus one is less than is equal to a n for all values of n. So this shows that this sequence is a decreasing sequence. There is a one more method to show that whether the sequence is increasing or decreasing and that method is basically using the calculus. So let me show you that as well. So method number two to show whether the sequence is increasing or decreasing sequence. So first I will do, I will consider this sequence as a function and I'm gonna take this function, I'm gonna replace n by x and I consider this function. I will show you in our future video that if this function is increasing or it's decreasing, this sequence will increase and decrease uh, with that function. Or in other words, if this function is increasing, this sequence will be increasing. And if this function is decreasing, that sequence will be decreasing. And we have learned in a calculus course that how to find whether the function is increasing or decreasing. And it is by taking the derivative of that function. So if I calculate f prime of x, as you can see, the derivative of this function is a minus one over x square. And the derivative of this function is always less than is equal to zero because it is a negative. So it means this function is a decreasing. So f of x is a decreasing function. So if this is a decreasing function, it means the sequence a n is also a uh, decreasing sequence. In our next example, we will consider the sequence a n 2n square divided by n square plus 1. And we will find whether the sequence is increasing or it is a decreasing. So I will begin by basically calculating the difference of uh, a n plus 1, which was my first method, minus a n. And then I will simplify this expression and see whether the sequence is increasing or it is a decreasing sequence. So what will be a n plus one? So n will be replaced by n plus one to the square of that. n plus one, the square of that plus one and minus uh, a n term, which is basically two n square divided by n square plus one. Now you can pause the video here and simplify these expression and uh, and you can again match your calculation with me in a few minutes. So as you can see, if I simplify this expression a n plus one minus a n, I will get this uh, expression, which is a two n square plus four n plus two divided by n square plus one multiplied by n square plus two n plus three. 
and this expression is clearly strictly greater than or is equal to zero for all n belong to the set of natural number because uh, the top is also is going to be positive and also the bottom is always going to be a positive so this number is always positive so this will implies if this number is a positive it means a n plus one minus a n is always going to be greater than or equal to zero or in other word a n plus one is greater than or equal to a n so therefore this is an uh, increasing sequence so this is a increasing sequence so if this is an increasing sequence therefore this is also a monotone sequence now i will consider my third example in this third example i will consider this sequence a n minus 1 to the power n and uh, divide by n so this sequence so as you can see that if i compute few term of this sequence a 1 is equal to it will be a 1 a negative 1 a2 will be one half and a3 will be negative one third and a4 will be one four and so on and as you can see that a1 is less than or is equal to a2 but a2 is now bigger than or is equal to a3 and a3 is less than or is equal to a4 so as you can see that uh, this sequence does not satisfy either this increasing the condition of the increasing sequence or neither it satisfy the condition of the uh, decreasing sequence. Therefore, this is not an increasing sequence and also this is not a decreasing sequence or in other words, we will say this is not uh, a monotone sequence. Next, we will state and prove a very important theorem of this topic, which is monotone convergence theorem. So let's first read what is the statement of monotone convergence theorem. The statement of the theorem says that if a sequence is monotone, or no matter, is either it is increasing or it's a decreasing, and along with that, if a sequence is bounded, so in other words, if a sequence satisfies two conditions, it is a monotone sequence and it is also a bounded sequence, uh, then it must be a, an increasing, a convergent sequence. Then that sequence must converge uh, to a finite limit. So let's begin the proof of this theorem. And first I will write down what is given. So given is, let's suppose I have a sequence A n and I'm gonna assume without a lot of generality, this is an increasing sequence because if a sequence is a monotone that either it will be increasing or decreasing. So I can uh, assume that uh, the sequence is increasing. And also I assume that the sequence is a uh, bounded. So, and what I have to show, I want to show that this sequence A n uh, is a convergent sequence. Also, I need to find the limit in what limit the sequence is convergent. So let's begin uh, by what is a given. We're going to start what is a given. So from the given, the sequence is increasing and bounded. First, I will use the property of the boundedness and construct this set. So this set, I'm going to put all the term of the sequence in this set when n is belongs to set of natural numbers. So all the term of the sequence belongs to this set. So since the sequence is bounded, it means the each term of the sequence is less than or is equal to a real number m. So if the sequence is bounded, so this one implies this set is bounded. And in fact, this set is also a bounded above set. And also this set is a a bounded above subset of real number. Subset of real number. So if this is a bounded above subset of real number, I can use by the axiom of completeness. This set, this, this set, the soup of the set exists. The, the soup of S exist and then can just denote it by L, where 
L is a real number. So sup of this set will exist and it will be a real number. And so I denote that a sup by L. Now I will make a very important claim. So my claim will be the limit n approaches to infinity of my sequence a n is equal to l. So my sequence is convergent and it is converges to l. So I already used the boundedness property. Now in order to show that the sequence is convergent, I will also use the increasing. The property of the sequence is an increasing sequence. So if I want to show that a sequence is a convergent, all I need to show is that this is statement that for all epsilon positive, there exist. I have to find that uh, natural number n, which is belongs to the set of natural number, the capital N, uh, so that the a n minus l is less than epsilon, the general term, the difference between the general term and L is less than epsilon when N is bigger than or is equal to that capital N. So this is the statement which I need to prove. So let's begin by what is a given again. So the given is L is the sup of the set S. If L is the sup, since L is the sup of that set, the sup of S. So this means L minus epsilon cannot be an upper bound, is not an upper bound. Cannot be an upper bound. Because if L minus epsilon is an upper bound, this will become the least upper bound and this contradict the uh, definition of the, uh, the sup or the least upper bound uh, of the set S is equal to L. So now we will use that. What does it mean by something is not an upper bound? So it implies there will exist an element from the set S. So I'm gonna assume, let's suppose there exist a subscript of capital N, or in other words, there exist an N uh, which is basically the element of the set S. And this implies basically this set, uh, this element satisfy this condition that uh, this element A n is bigger than or is equal to L minus epsilon. So this is the one conclusion if something is not an uh, upper bound. Now I'm gonna rewrite this inequality again. So I have L minus epsilon, which is a less than is equal to A N. And now I will use that uh, the property of the sequence, A N is an increasing sequence. Therefore, A N, the A capital N always will be less than is equal to A N uh, when N is bigger than or is equal to that capital N. Here I use the sequence is increasing because since the a n sequence is increasing, therefore the previous term, so a n is the previous term of the sequence, which is less than or is equal to the next term because a n is bigger than or capital N. So therefore a n is the next term of the sequence and its previous term is a n. So this inequality will hold. And also I will use the fact that L is an, um, least upper bound. So therefore, all a n uh, must be less than is equal to L because L is in least upper bound. And this inequality will hold L plus epsilon. Because if I add some epsilon into in L, so that L plus epsilon must be greater than is equal to, um, L is less than is equal to L plus epsilon. And this is the true for all n bigger than or is equal to that capital N. Now I will choose the inequality which I need. I need L minus epsilon less than or is equal to A N and I need, this is L plus epsilon. I ignore this term and I ignore this term. And that is true for all N bigger than or is equal to capital N. Now I will subtract L from uh, each uh, side. This will give me minus epsilon less than or is equal to a n minus l less than is equal to epsilon. 
when n is bigger than is equal to n. Uh, this implies simply, uh, I will use the this famous property of the absolute value function. This implies a n minus l is less than epsilon when n is bigger than or is equal to n. And this shows basically that uh, this statement is true. So I find that capital N, whenever the little n is bigger than that capital N, the difference of the journal term a n minus l is less than epsilon. So therefore, this sequence is convergent and the sequence is converges to L, which is the soup of that set. The set we construct from by using the property of the border net of the sequence. So this completes the proof of this theorem. Next, I have one quiz problem for you to practice. Uh, please pause the video for one and two minutes and work on this problem. This is also the end of this video. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.